What's the story of Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Unexpected Season 5, Episode 11, It's Time to Grow Up. So let's get through Jenna and Tyra. Let's get them out of the way so we can spend a little bit extra time with Kylan and Jason. So Jenna, nothing going on here. Jenna, her family's having a beach vacation. The significance of it this year is that her mom is also going to be invited. As we know, her mother and her father buried the hatchet they had a conversation that they were going to stop arguing stop bickering stop attacking each other for the sake of Luca they keep telling us it's all for the sake of Luca so at the beach vacation everybody shows up um the mother her mother shows up and it seems like it's so far it's going well her parents are not fighting they're actually having decent civilized conversations you know they're acting like adults it kind of seemed like to me that um Jenna's stepmom was the one that was probably feeling kind of funny about this whole reconciliation thing. Um, because she says something about how, you know, um, she wouldn't have brought her ex to the beach house. So kind of like, why would it be okay to bring Jenna's mom or to invite Jenna's mom to the beach house? I could be wrong. Maybe I was reading too much into it, but it kind of seemed like the stepmom wasn't a hundred percent on board with having Jenna's mom back into their lives like this. So also Aiden, Aiden was in one of his moods. He was not happy. He was, um, sulking, um, when everybody was downstairs in the living room, talking, commiserating, socializing, Jenna goes upstairs to get Aiden and tells him, you know, why don't you come down downstairs and join us? And he's like, nope. And she doesn't understand why he's in a bad mood. Um, she did mention that he thought this whole beach party thing, beach party vacation was stupid. Inviting her mom was stupid. Um, Aiden thought that it was all going to go to hell quickly because the parents were going to be together again. You know, her, two, her parents were going to be there together. So he thought that they were going to start fighting again or that at some point it was going to fall apart. So he thought the whole thing was stupid to begin with whatever. Aiden seems like the kind of person where I felt like Jenna should have just been happy that he even showed up. Uh, the way that he is, I'm shocked that he even showed up because it seems like he would have been like, no, I'm not going to go. You know, you go with your dysfunctional parents and have a good time. But for him to even go with her and be there, I was like, okay, you know, Jenna, just kind of take this and, and, and be happy with what you got. Don't push him too much. Don't pressure him to do something he doesn't want to do. Maybe eventually, you know, like a baby after they're done having a tantrum, you know, or a toddler after they're done having a tantrum, you know, they, they're ready to mingle again. They're ready to play with everybody again. So maybe when he's out of his funk, he'll come down and, um, you know, be with everybody else. So for now, just leave him alone. If he wants to sulk, leave him alone. Um, but Jenna says the fact that he wasn't willing to come down and mingle with everybody kind of solidifies to her that she needs to get out of this relationship. Uh, maybe you do, Jenna. I don't know. Um, this, this is a weird season for Aiden because last season, Aiden was a lot more talkative. He was a lot more, you know, animated this season. He barely talks when he is on camera. Most of the time he's not on camera and it seems like there's something going, obviously there's something going on between them, but it seems like he probably made a decision that he, if he was going to have to be on camera, he wasn't going to talk. Like he really doesn't want to do the show anymore or something to that effect. I don't know. But, um, Jenna, if you feel like you need to, leave this situation for your own mental health please do ASAP Tyra and Alex uh not much going on here Tyra and Alex are back together I don't know what's going on with this chick in Texas no one can give a concrete answer is the girl pregnant number one can we even narrow that down can we get a confirmation on that is she even pregnant number two is she even pregnant by Alex because maybe Alex and Tyra really don't have a problem at all if the girl isn't even pregnant so I have no idea what's going on with that. Tara acts like um, Alex has to prove something to her uh, to be back with her. And I'm like, Tara, girl, you're back with Alex. Y'all are back together. Every time he opens his mouth, she's giggling. She's playing with her hair. You know, she's looking at him underneath her eye eyelashes. You know, like she's just so smitten by him. Y'all are back together. You got to call a thing a thing. It is what it is. So stop acting like, you know, he has to prove himself to you before you give him another chance. Tara meets up with her cousin, Taylor. Um, she wants Taylor and Tiara to somehow squash their beef. 
over this whole nursery room thing. Um, but I think it was, it wasn't the nursery room started it, but I think the heart of the beef was when, um, Taylor and her mom were saying that Tierra steals boyfriends, steals friends, not just nursery room ideas. I think that was really what bugged Tierra and Tierra's mom. Um, it wasn't so much about the damn nursery. That was just the catalyst. So maybe Taylor and Tara will also bury the hatchet and have a conversation one day. Moving on. Kylan and Jason. So this is the one that I want to spend the most time on. And it wasn't even so much about Kylan and Jason that bothered me. It was about Kylan and her parents. So... Marie calls Kylan on the phone to see where she's at, to see how she's doing. At this point, Kylan is 35 hours in, in labor. Kylan tells her mom that she finally got her epidural and that Jason got kicked out and that she's all alone. So her mother offers to come up to the hospital to be with her. Kylan tells her mother, no, I'm fine. I want Jason. That's who I want. So I'm a little bit confused because I could have sworn whenever... Kylan's parents will talk, will talk about Kylan and how she was when she was living with them and how she was, you know, growing up with them. They make her sound like this really innocent, mild mannered, shy little girl who was very, very attached to her mom. And she was a mama's girl because her mom would say, her mom had said several times that, you know, she was my shadow. She was my mini me. She was always by my side. She was very attached to me. But then when we see Kylan interact with her parents, and I understand that Jason has a lot of influence over her and maybe she talks the way she talks to her parents the way she does because how Jason has conditioned her, I get it. But whenever we see Kylan talk to her parents, she is just a brat. She's so rude to them. She's like telling them what to do, telling them to shut up, telling them to be quiet. Um, acting like she has no clue, has no idea how these people feel, what they're going through emotionally, even though she grew up with them. She knows how her parents are. She, she can tell, she can hear the hurt in her mother's voice, but she acts like she doesn't. And then she tells her mother, um, I want, Jason is the one that I want here. And I'm like, Colin, you just continue to dig that knife deeper and deeper into your parents' heart without a care in the world. And I'm just like, where is this sweet, innocent, mild mannered, shy little Kylan that was attached to her mom? Like, where is that little girl? Because I have, I still, I have yet to see it. So, uh, then that was into the conversation. She says she wants Jason there. That's who she wants. You know, it's okay. I love you. Bye. That was an end of the conversation. In the confessional, Marie says that she was really hurt that Kylan didn't want her there. Totally understandable, Marie. So Jason ended up, after he got kicked out of the hospital, he went home, changed his clothes, took a shower, took a shower, then changed his clothes, and then got back in his car and he was going to go right back to the hospital. Um, he calls Kylan and he blames her for him getting kicked out of the hospital. Um, he tells her if he didn't get the epidural, I would not have gotten kicked out. And so I'm like, okay, he's delusional. He's crazy. He doesn't understand reality, but she's still in labor. Your, your girlfriend is still in labor. So you calling her, blaming her, trying to make her feel guilty for you getting kicked out like, how is that helping anything? She's still in labor and you're still treating her like garbage. So he's yelling at her um, to tell the staff that, you know, they need to let him back in. They need to let him back up to the hospital. And she actually does that. She does. She actually tells the staff that she wants her boyfriend back in. And the staff keeps telling her that we can, we'll let him back in, but he has to remain calm. And if he starts acting up again, he's going to get kicked out permanently. Side note, the producers ask J uh, Jason in the confessional, they tell him, you're against the epidural, but you vape. And Jason says, well, I'm against hardcore addictive drugs like heroin, fentanyl. I don't care about alcohol, tobacco, all that other stuff is fine. So that's just a little side note. So Marie, Kylan's mom and her sister, they end up coming to the hospital anyway. Obviously they can't go inside, so they're stuck in the parking lot. Kylan's dad was unable to make it because of his health. It seems like his health is deteriorating. 
Colin's dad is on oxygen in his confessional. So when I saw him, you can physically see that there has been a shift in his health. It is so obvious from the beginning to where we're at now. Um, he looks a lot weaker. He's on oxygen. He just looks, he, he literally looks like, yes, his health is definitely declining because you can physically see it. And it's really heartbreaking to watch. So Colin's dad in his confessional, he says that the only thing keeping him alive is the thought of his, you know, meeting his grandson and spending time with his grandson. Um, and it's really sad. It's really sad. Um, Jason talks to Marie in the parking lot um, about Kylan. And Jason says in his confessional that, you know, this is what he says to her in the confessional. He says to Kylan, you were going to have your mother there, weren't you? Kind of like, you know, saying like, you know, you have the audacity to want to have your mom there instead of me because, you know, he saw the mother in the parking lot. And so I guess he thought that maybe Kylan had asked her mom to come up and be there with her after he left. And so now he's like, you know, accusing her of, you know, the horrible, horrible crime of possibly having or wanting her mom to be there with her while she's, you know, in labor. So Kylan says, no, I wasn't going to have her there. I only wanted you. What can you say? What can you say? We're the outsiders looking in. We see how crushed and devastated her parents are, how much they love their daughter. We see Jason, how he treats her like garbage. And then we have to hear her say, no, I wasn't going to have my mom up there. I only wanted you, my abuser. You're the only one that I really wanted there. So all I can say is, Kylan, you know, you are willing to put this man above your parents, above your dying father. I mean, I don't want to put that in existence. I don't know if he's dying or not, but above your sick father, you want to, you know, put him up there above everybody else who cares and loves you. Uh, keep that same energy, Kylan, when he leaves you for something newer and shinier. Um, keep that same energy that you always had wanted, Jason. You didn't want nobody else. And don't go crawling back to your parents. So Marie is getting really frustrated because because um, Jason's in the parking lot talking to Marie and he's trying to give her an update about how Kylan is doing. And he doesn't even have he doesn't even know the correct terminology. Um, he called the um, the cervix. He called it the spectrum. He didn't know how to explain anything because he's an idiot. I think he's also isn't he like a dropout as well? He ha had no clue. So the mother was like, you know, it was really difficult and frustrating to try to get information from Jason because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, he's idiotic. So while talking to Marie, Jason gets a text from Kyle and letting him know that it's OK for him to come back up. So back in the confessional, Kylan's dad, no, not in the confessional, on the phone. Um, Kylan tells Marie that it should have been Marie that should have been able to gone up there to be with Kylan because only Marie can give consent. If anything went wrong, only Marie would be the one to be able to um, make any kind of medical decisions on behalf of Kylan. Jason obviously can't do it because they're not married, but I mean, for her to do that, Kylan would have to want her to be up there. 47 hours into labor, um, the baby is finally born at 11.01 p.m. Uh, Marie calls uh, Marie calls her husband, Michael, to tell him because I think it was, um, who was it that told Marie? I don't know if it was Jason or Colin that told Marie. So Marie calls her husband, Michael, to tell him that the baby's been born. Michael says in his confessional, I hope to be around long enough to see him start walking. But as long as Colin is with Jason, um, Jason's not going to allow it. And it's like every single time we see her parents, they say something that absolutely crushes my heart and it breaks my heart even more. The fact that they, they don't want nothing. They're not telling her to leave him. They're not telling her to come home. They're not telling her, I mean, as far as we can see, okay, we can, I can only go by with what they show us on the TV. They're not pressuring her to do anything that she doesn't want to do. They just want to spend time, a little bit of time with their daughter and hopefully a little bit of time with their, with their grandson. But they're already, they already know that this guy is not going to let that happen. Now, maybe, like I said, maybe once the baby's born, something will melt in Jason's heart and something will change him and he will be a little bit more open to her parents being more involved with them and the baby. Um, all we can do is hope and pray. So 
in their confessional, Jason and Colin, we get to see the baby. I think his name is Xavier. Um, Jason says that he thought that being a parent was going to be easy. He realizes that it wasn't as easy as he thought. He says, now it's time to grow up and act more mature and give him everything that I didn't get. So that's good. Okay. That's a good sign. That's a good start. It was also good and refreshing to see Jason very hands-on with the baby. He was the one holding the baby. He was the one dealing with the baby in their confessional. Um, So it seems like we're off to a good start as far as that's concerned, okay? Um, But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. At least he's willing to take care of the baby. It seems like it. I mean, we only saw, you know, a couple of seconds of this. Who knows what it's like, you know, in real life when they're home with the baby and the baby's crying all night long. But it seems like, you know, it was good to see that he was somewhat involved with his child. Um, I don't know what to say. I think I've said it all. It's just really sad to see um, Kylan and her parents and how that relationship has deteriorated to the point to where it's at now. Um, and I understand that her father is trying to do the best that he can so that he can see his son. I mean, see his grandson and spend time with his grandson. But I think that the relationship between him and his daughter is probably is what's going to affect his health the most. Um, It was just so sad to see that man on the oxygen tank and to see that he has gotten worse and Kylan would rather be arguing with her abuser and, um, allowing herself to go through something that she doesn't even have to go through. It's really sad, but baby Xavier is here. Um, beautiful, healthy baby boy. Um, and we'll just see what happens after this. Thank you so much for joining me in this review on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like this content. If you don't like this content, don't worry about it. Just pass on by. Thank you for stopping by anyway. And I will definitely talk to you later. Bye.